Emmanuel family. I'm Emmanuel Makandiwa and uh, very much excited to come your way on this uh, particular program, which is very wonderful and interesting, which I believe is going to bring a change into your life. And before we get into the program and into the Word of God, I'm going to release a prayer that is going to cover you in terms of your hearing abilities. Because I believe this week is going to be so outstanding. You are going to encounter information that is so transforming, information that is capable of changing your life for good. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, and at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Father, I give you all the praise, and I thank you for blessing every person who is watching us now. By way of television or on the internet, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that every package that God has prepared for you in this week, shall be successfully delivered into your hands and into your spirit. I pray that as you listen, may the heavens open up a different level of understanding that will give you an advantage. I bless you now as you watch and even as you listen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Well, family, once again, like I said, this is a wonderful program which uh, I got from uh, the Holy Spirit. He spoke to me about it. And probably if you are one person who used to follow us ever since we started uh, this ministry, the United Family International Ministries, you cannot remember for once seeing us coming live, raising funds, and asking people to sow seeds, either on television, or on our Facebook, or on any other platform, except that we have done it in our local church. So I'm going to ask you now to take this moment seriously, and believe God for what he is about to do now. It is a new season that is coming. There is a new period of time in your life that the Holy Spirit would want to introduce. And this program is all about invitations, inviting those that are interested in seeing changes in their lives. This ministry for years now has been uh, working on several projects which I believe have uh, uh, brought a lot of uh, a difference in our communities and massive transformations. And we believe that uh, we are in another phase this moment around and preparing ourselves for greater mountains and greater challenges that we believe are placed before us. I have uh, a group of uh, professionals that are looking into massive projects that we want to embark on right now as I'm talking to you. Hence, the Holy Spirit has given me a clearance and a permission to come into your home and talk to you about the agenda that God has for our communities. Now, what you're going to see happening here is a fulfillment of scriptures. And there is a reason why I would want to really talk to you about committing yourself 
to the vision of God. People have their dreams. And we need to understand that God also has his own dreams. We have our visions and God has his own vision. And the best way to support your vision, you simply have to support God's vision. And when you support God's vision, you have invited God to also support your own vision. Now imagine if you have God on your side, supporting whatever it is that you are doing. There is no chance that you can fail in life. But I'm here to talk to you about several things that we are going to do as a way of proclaiming the Lordship of Jesus in our communities. Why? Because the preaching of the word of God is not done just from the pulpit or through a microphone. There are several things that we can do to demonstrate the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Much needs to be said and also much needs to be done. We are coming here now to invite you to something which I would want you to be part of because I know the benefits and the blessings that will follow if you are to obey the instructions of the Holy Spirit. You will notice in your Bible, in the book of our prophet Zechariah chapter number 1 and verse 17, God himself declares that his own cities Take not of that, not villages, but his own cities shall be spread abroad through prosperity. The cities of God shall be extended, expanded, and enlarged through prosperity. When God wants to extend his rulership and domain, he does that through prosperity. So we are here to demonstrate the kingdom of God and to extend cities that God will want to establish within our cities by introducing the principle of prosperity. Now, take away prosperity, even the kingdom of God cannot be expanded. So you look, you see, you notice that Every project that we are going to be working on, it carries the presence of God in a certain way and it will help people understand that we have Jesus, we have God ruling from our midst. So now we are going to get into the word of God and I'm going to give you scriptures that will support whatever it is that I have heard from God. We have the scriptural basis. I rely upon the written word of God. If I find a place in the written word of God where God speaks or talks about something, I pay attention to that. I have placed great value on the written word of God. And this is the written word of God, the Logos. And there is the spoken word of God, which is Rema. That's the one that I had now when the Holy Spirit gave me an instruction to specifically come to you, into your house, and be talking to you live now as I'm talking to you. So we have both the spoken word of God, and the written word of God. Now, what God has spoken to me about, let's find out if it can be confirmed by the word that is written, the Logos. Now, I'm going to take my time and walk you through the principles of God 
that you might not have come across. Though you have been born again for years, being born again is a different story and getting to know and to access the benefits of being born again, that's also another different story. So I want to bring you to a level of understanding and make you understand that there is a desire that God has for you that you don't even understand. Where you are today, that's not where you are going to be tomorrow. And that's a fact. That is the truth. We are moving every day from one place to another place. Whether you are seated, you remain sitting in one place and yet the following day you are no longer the same, the same person. You are no longer the same height. You no longer have the same complexion. You no longer have the same strength that you used to have yesterday. Which means in as much as you remain or you choose to sit in one place, still change is inevitable. So you are migrating always and on a daily basis from one place to another place. Even if you make a decision to stay in one place, you can stay there for three years and watch. You will notice a difference even on your physical body because you are always moving from one place to another place. So now, is it something that is uh, permissible? Is it a scriptural thing for a man of God who is believed to have been called by God to come to people and ask the people to sow seeds towards a particular a project. Is that scriptural? Very soon we'll be getting into the word of God. But this is something very interesting that I'd want you to look at. When I was growing up in the things of God, I used to like arguing a lot And um, I thought that the moment you caught a scripture from the word of God, that is enough to deal with every debate. That was my thinking. I thought if you find a scripture that supports what you are doing, then that's the end of the story. And only to realize that that's not really what matters when it comes to uh, rational uh, debating. You need to understand that um, it's not every time I give people scriptures and immediately they understand that this is what God is talking about. First and foremost, we are going to establish something very important here. This is the question before we get into the word of God. It's a very important question which you need to answer and be sure of the answer that you give to this question. Very important question before we get into the written word of God. What is the question? Do you believe the written word of God from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation is really the written word of God. Do you believe the Bible to be the word of God? Do you think the Bible is the word of God? Think about it. Ask yourself that question. Don't ignore it. Do you believe in the Bible before any scripture can be quoted from the Bible, do you believe in the word of God 
the Bible? If your answer is yes, then I have a permission to convince you with the written word of God. Because now that you know that it is the word of God, at least I have somewhere to start from. I don't want to quote scriptures thinking that I can convince you and yet you don't believe in the entire Bible. If you believe that the Bible is the word of God, and that's exactly what we are going to use to defend the instruction that we got from the Holy Spirit on the projects that we need to work on from this moment forth. Now back to the other question that I asked some few minutes ago. Is it allowed for a man of God or a woman of God to go public and talk to people about offerings, asking people to sow seeds, let me not say donations, to sow seeds towards any particular reason. Is it something that is scriptural? In case you find somebody doing that, you'd want to know. Is this according to scripture? And is it according to the word of God? Am I supposed to listen to such a man or such a woman who talks about money on my screen, on my laptop, on my computer? Is this something from the word of God having a man coming to you and asking you to sow a seed? If that is scripture, then there has to be a scripture. And within that scripture, we have to find a man or a woman of God doing that. Then we know it is something that is biblical. So take note of that. If you haven't seen a man of God who comes public and talks about offerings openly without hesitation, you are looking at the man right now. So I want you to understand what is about to happen right now. I'm coming your way and I'm going to declare my intentions. I'm going to ask you to make a commitment Throughout this whole week, you are going to do sowing for the sake of the harvest that you desire. You will sow seeds for a specific harvest that you desire. And I'm going to give you instructions on how to do that. So very soon, I'm coming back, I'm going to give you a very short break and come back and we start investigating the word of God, find out whether what I'm about to do now is scriptural. And if you find a scripture that supports what is about to happen now, I would want you now to stay glued to your screens and follow me as we embark on this wonderful journey, which is called the Blessing Covenant Week. I'm coming back. God bless you.